The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. And by Mosaic, your Lightroom photos automatically on every device and backed up. And by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 91. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. On last week's show, we talked about how much to charge for your photography, optimizing your photos for WordPress, and the ultra-cool, new, inexpensive Raspberry Pi microcomputer. If you haven't listened to last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, listen with the popular Stitcher and TuneIn radio apps, and now watch in HD on TiVo. So, Joe, we are back. How you doing, my friend? How are you doing? I am doing well. 91. Episode 91, that's right. We've got a good show today. We're actually going to be chatting with our friend and photographer and social media guru, digital marketing guy, Ross Sillers. Yes. It's been a while since we spoke to him, so we are going to have him on um, in any second. Yes. (laughs) Ross, are we together? We are. How are you doing? Excellent. Good to be here. Good day to you. (laughs) Thank you. And you, nice snow day. It's great. Mm. It's yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's snow day for Rosh and I. It's sunny yeah. day for Joe. <laughs> yes, well, it's, it's always a sunny day for Joe. No matter where sh- he is, even when he's up north with us. Then <laughs> Thank all you very much. The sky's part and it's clear and it's beautiful. That's right. That's right. That's right. That, 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 there you go. I just want to comment. I love your new hairdo. Thank you. Thank you. It is, it is awesome. If you guys <laughs> are you. You're, you know, the folks that are not listening and they're actually watching, take a look on the screen. We're going to have to put it up. You just, you know, if, if we're not rolling video, hopefully you are, you're going to see a nice picture of Rosh. He's looking very, very slick. Yes. Love yes. It. yes. Yes. I did this uh, last August. I, I decided mm-hmm. that enough was enough. And yep. uh, I was looking a little too much <laughs> like an old professor and <laughs> <laughs> with the beard and, and no hair, uh, at least through yes. the middle. And I said, you know what? It's just time. And so I did. And I'm, I'm quite happy about it. I don't think I'll be going back. Yeah. yeah it looks, looks good. good. It's looks a way good. to do it, man. It looks good. Thanks. Knock 10 years off you and uh, you're right. looking hip. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I was doing the, the beard thing for a while and I've reached the point now where it just grows in white. So I'm yes. pretty much done. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Now, Joe down there, he's got like thick, dark hair, like not a gray Ugh. spot. And it's like, ugh. and it grows yeah. overnight. I mean, then yeah, right. tomorrow he'll have like a full beard. <laughs> yeah, I'm like woolly mammoth, basically. <laughs> it's It's that Latin blood my my father he's like getting close to 80s in his upper 70s and um his hair is like black with just like a couple of gray hairs wow. you know wow. so um i guess that's just you know good genetics man you lucky maybe it's all the maybe it's the olive oil you know they used to all like yeah. slick their hair with olive oil <laughs> right, right. Did, i should have jeez if i only knew <laughs> you you should should have have done done Oh man! Oh, so Raj, it's been a little while since you were here last i guess the yeah. last yes. show was uh episode 48 so yeah. that was a long time ago. That was yeah. this uh, past April. Yeah, you're you're mentioning you're mentioning the very first one I came on was number mm. twenty seven. So I think we yep. all surmised that you know doubled each number. So the next one will be one eighty one. One eighty one. That's right. By then, all we do is just say, "Hey, camera, go take pictures for me." You know, at that during that show. So right. That's <laughs> right. That's isn't, right. Isn't technology moving at that pace? I mean, I think we'll be there. It's going crazy, man. Every every it time a new way. camera comes out or whatever, they've added new features that make it less and less work for us photographers that have to do manually. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about golf and going to the club and Marjan exactly. and, um, you know, stuff like that probably by then and <laughs> let someone else do the pictures. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> so speaking of new technologies, Raj, you uh, recently uh, released a book about the T, the Rebel uh, T4i, right? I did. I did. Um, that was quite the interesting uh, scenario, how that came about. Uh, as you know, last time I was on the show, I was uh, talking about uh, one-hour photographer. And I yes, want to thank right. your whole community. Let me tell you guys, you guys have quite a community. And I made some offers and I, I spent days, no, no, weeks <laughs> answering emails uh, from your community about it and sharing it with them. And so I want to appreciate, I really do appreciate yes, everybody's support. They do. They you have a great yeah. community. And uh, and so I, I pitched it to uh, 
to uh, Wiley. I kind of uh, thought, hey, I'm going to uh, leave a little meat on the bone on this, you know, s- save some photos, pitch it to a publisher. Wiley was my first target and where I wanted to go. And I pitched it to him and they looked at it and they politely said no. no <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> so uh, I... Um, <laughs> I had a chapter in there where I really an area I'm working a lot in called the combination code. And that's what I want my next book to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I pitched that to them and they looked at it and like, Hey, yeah, we like this. They say, okay, but that's a chapter. You know, you're going to, how are you going to make a whole <laughs> book out of this? So I sent them the whole, you know, the whole thing laid out how I do it. And they looked at it and said, yep, yeah, this, this, this is good. Let's pursue it. And about four, six weeks into the project, uh, I, I received an email said, Hey, the, the Canon T4i book, uh, excuse me, came out, Canon T4i came out. Would you mind writing the book on that, the digital field guide? Like, well, yeah. you know, I want to oh, impress okay. this new publisher. Uh, I want to mm-hmm. be a part of the team. Okay, let's do it. Great. Can you do it in six weeks for us, please? <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, what is oh, it? Uh, 15,000 words? 75,000 words 75, plus 000? photos. Oh, my God. Um, Ugh. plus laying it out, you know, with, you know, I ha- you have to format it. I mean, everything in six weeks and it needs mm. to get, I mean, it's one of those things. It needs to get to the market as soon as possible. So sure. if you ever wonder if you can write a book in six weeks, uh, the answer is yes. And one thing that I did that I really, that's different from the other field guides that's worked really well is that I invited some of my friends to the party. Uh, to share their expertise because a lot of these field guides, it's usually just the author sharing their ideas. And I thought some mm-hmm. people that I uh, know and trust and like can come to the party. And I invited a number of people and I have people uh, on my list for the next time. Um, and of course, nice. Joe being one of them, he's in the, in the book. And, uh, Thank you. and so appreciate I appreciate that. you that was a lot uh, of participating in that experiment. And so... Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. The digital field guides. I mean, they've got a whole series of these books. Yeah. So that's, oh, that's yeah. good. Right. You're in good company there with uh, with your first book with them for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So um, we're working on others. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing another one for them or not. I mean, we'll see. I mean, the, usually the, it has to do with sales. And you know what? Sales are pretty darn good. Um, so that's they kept great. running out over Christmas. And uh, I was actually uh, in competition with uh, the number one that's always the number one. And that's the Four Dummies book. And right. on, Chris, in for, on Christmas Eve, I was tied with them in terms of sales. And wow. so, wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, you know, the what, and, and let me be candid why they brought me on board. I mean, there's this, I'm not known as the equipment guy. Now, I've been doing this a long time. Right. Uh, but, I mean, I know my equipment, I know, but I'm not, you know, some people are like so in depth and know every little detail of everything and who are just told, you know, equipment people. Um, I'm not necessarily known for that, but they knew me for marketing and they said, okay, he's got a little of both. Let's take a chance. Let's see what happens. And so far, you know, it's worked. Um, I showed them I could sell books. So they're pretty happy about that. Yeah, we we talk about that a lot. You know, as a photographer, you know, we even if you know the gear and you can take a great picture, you know, if you're not good at marketing, sales, selling yourself, Absolutely. getting, you know, getting the word out there, social media on and on and on. Um, you're just going to basically take pictures for yourself because no <laughs> right. one's going to know you're there and no one's going to be buying them. So, yeah, exactly. yeah, that's that's huge. Very, very smart on their part. Yeah, well, I, I hope so. I mean, they, they've, they've just said that they're very happy with that, you know, so um, we'll see. Maybe I'll do the next one. Um, it depends on if I get the book that I really want to do, which, again, is the combination code. So I'm still developing right. that with them. So we'll see if they awesome. that goes. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. So. Thank, so thank, we thank see you've you. got another uh, project that you've got going on called uh, Green Sprout Forum. So what, yeah. what all is that about? I, I honestly, I only just found out about it the other day when we first started talking. I didn't even know you were doing it. And I see yeah. you're like 16 shows into this thing already. So I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm way yeah. behind. <laughs> well, we, uh, Dean Latticer, who's one of my partners in the show, he, he and I started Prosperous Artists back in 2007. And and that kicked off, uh, kind of re-kicked off my podcasting career because I had done podcasts back in 99, 2000. Okay. And then I kind of stepped away because my magazine career was working, you know, keeping me busy with photos. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of, you know, social media and all that was getting back going. I said, hey, let's let's start a a podcast. Actually, my rep recommended it. And uh, Dean and I got together, started Prosperous Artists, did 145 shows together. And eventually I I got in 2008, I started a new media photographer and with that. So anyway, this was one of those things, a concept I had in the summer, I was playing with it, starting to use Google Plus, doing a live show and testing that out. And uh, during that beta time, Dean kind of came back and said, hey, let's get the band back. 
back together, you know, see what we can do. <laughs> and so we, right. we did, and uh, we did the beta test in the fall and brought our friend Steve Galtieri on board. And we're all at kind of different levels in our careers. Dean's a writer. Steve um, is involved in digital marketing. He, he's, he's in the sales portion. And, and of course, I do photography and digital marketing and social media. So we come together, and Green Sprout Forum is actually a process. You can actually start your own Green Sprout Forum and bring together people. Right. Um, and so we start each show with, you know, what's your success of the week? And then each person brings an educational portion of the week. And then we uh, t- have a topic of the week. And we often bring in guests. And we've been bringing in some good guests, national people. Our next uh, person is from Montana, uh, mm-hmm. a social media consultant. We uh, Our last guest was, is a play-by-play ESPN uh, announcer. Uh, you know, so we're we're really getting interesting people who are sharing different ideas that will help grow your business. And so we do it live noon Mondays uh, at Green Sprout Forum and on Google Plus. And uh, we 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 share articles all day long during out the week throughout the week. You know, six to nine, ten articles a day that we think is helpful. And so that's what we do. And we're having a great time with it. It's kind of fun starting over again. You know, I have my RoshSillers.com. It's like it's been around. It's growing. It's great. Great following. But you, sometimes you forget what it's like to start all over again from the very basics. And uh, it's it's uh, humbling, yeah, but the, it's also exciting to, to that's learn. That's the fun part, yeah. right? To build yeah. something, to, to get a baby and kind of raise it and yeah. you know, nurture yeah. it and make it happen. So it's almost like a mastermind type of uh, thing. Everyone brings their what they've done for the week or for the month. and um, There's an kind of element throw, of that, ideas. yeah. It's, a little bit. Yeah. It's a combination of a few things like that that we've been pulling together. And we're always adjusting it and making it, you know, so it's kind of like a live version of it. And, and we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep, it'll have this evolution over, over time until we get really what it should be. But right now it's working out pretty well. And we're all uh, seeing some positive growth in our businesses by coming together each week. Nice. Now, is Green Sprout Forum your guys' project or is this yes. something that you've picked up on? No, it's it's my project. Um, okay. Originally, I started off by myself, and I was talking to my <laughs> uh, my podcast uh, during the summer because I told people what I was doing. Just because, again, as someone who's involved in digital marketing and social media, it's good to really go through and test things and see what's happening sure. and do it yourself if you're going to recommend it to clients, and because they're just starting out. And so I started this, and I eventually said, you know. I suck at this alone. <laughs> I just am no good at this alone. I need someone else involved. So I kind of had the thoughts out that I need to bring somebody else on board. I mean, I've always done my podcast alone, but that's enough. Uh, it's always nice sure. to have someone to talk with and, and, and have a conversation with. So Sure, yeah, bounce uh, ideas off each other. Absolutely. Yeah. I know, I mean, a while back I had talked about doing a show for a current photographer and I had done some beta things, you know, kind of just in-house, my own testing it was a lot of work and it's a yeah. lot of work to do for, you know, for one person week after week after week. Yes. There, there was just, was no way I could do it. And that's why, you know, when Joe and I decided to, uh, do digital photography cafe, I mean, that, that was great. You know, now we yeah. share in the workload and he has yep. his expertise. I have mine and, and that's what we focus on. And that's what's enabled us to do this week after week for 91 weeks, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's right. definitely not a one man, um, process for sure. No. Well, yeah, you know, I the way I do it for my podcast, I mean, I keep it very simple. It's very low tech. I mean, I've done, what, gosh, what, 230, 40 shows now. Yeah, you've done um, a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, every Monday. I mean, that's that is solid. I have not missed yeah. a week yet. And but, you know, you got if you're going to do it like that, you you know, you really have to keep it. You guys have taken it you know, to a new level that I haven't even considered. So I'm quite impressed with what you guys do. I mean, just listen to you guys before the show, all the checks that you do and all the areas that need to be right. Like, <laughs> man, I'd be freaking out. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's a I'm lot. Impressed. It's a lot. <laughs> we, we actually had one of our uh, community members um, shoot us an email asking us about the whole podcasting thing and how he was looking to start one. And if we could offer any advice and, you know, it's like, hey, more power to you if if you have the, you know, the skills and the 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 content that you can provide that is different, a little bit more unique, your own spin on it. And you have the dedication because that's really what the the hard part is, is the consistency. It's not that you can't make a good show and it's not that you can't make a fantastic show one time, but can you do it repeatedly? week after yeah, week or every other week or what have you, at least consistently. Because that really yeah, we've is the seen only some, way you grow your audience. Yeah, absolutely. We've yeah. seen some very large shows, um, even photography based shows that, you know, go, yeah. you know, twenty episodes, thirty episodes and all of a sudden they evaporate 
because they don't realize what goes, you know, what goes into it. And, you know, uh, just like you, I mean, we don't really get anything out of it besides oh. just all that interaction from everyone that right. just, you know, we love it. We, you know, we yeah, feel not doing that. it for the, the so. money directly. I mean, the, exactly. the show has had huge benefits for us indirectly, but exactly. you know, directly from the show. I mean, yeah, we've got sponsors. It helps to pay for our sure. expenses, you know, yeah. our hosting fees and and a little bit of our time and such. But, you know, we're doing it as, you know, for the same reason that you're doing it. It really helps to position you as, uh, you know, as a leader within yeah, your industry. Yeah, as an expert. Absolutely. It really yeah. does take you to places you never thought you would go. And it's hard to believe Absolutely. just sitting in your basement talking to a microphone. You know, all these, <laughs> yeah. well, these days my office, but, you know, in the beginning, you know, it's, sure. uh, you know, you never you realize, you know, where it's going to take you. And look at where you guys have gone. And it certainly has benefited me the same way. Just the, you know, some guy in Detroit, you know, who's a photographer, you know, wants to share ideas. And, and as I like to say, you can make it in Detroit, you can make it anywhere. And uh, sure. so share those ideas and, and people have grasped onto it and uh, said, hey, here's some other opportunities, too. And I know, again, you guys have done the same. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one thing you did mention with the Green Spout Forum, you said that other people could start their own. So what is yes. that all about? Uh, if, you, if you go to greensproutforum.com, we have a, a place, you know, to start your own group and talk about it. There's no charge. There's nothing about it. It's just a list of how we set up the uh, forum. And we like to hear from people if they do that, uh, because it really is good to get together, keep each other accountable, and continue this educational portion. And, you know... You know, the, the mastermind and other types of places, it's not, right. it's not so education focused. And this is very education focused because we know that when you bring people with various backgrounds together, they have different insights and they can support each other to grow their business on a regular basis. And so we have all that information all at Green Sprout and they can uh, start their own and uh, build, build their business. Because a lot of times these days, people are in business, whether they like it or not, on their own. You know, yep. with all the downsizing, people are just forced into the fact that they have to do it, become freelance, a small business person or a solo, you know, entrepreneur. I mean, they just have to. And so yeah. it's very lonely. And, right. and so to, to have that group yeah. of people to to meet with at least once a week, you know, maybe every other week to to really say, hey, we're all in this together. We may be in different industries or similar, support each other, but ultimately it's good to just bounce ideas off of, share educational elements and keep each other accountable. Um, hey, and bring in a special guest. Why not? You know, have someone come in and, you know, an accountant during tax time. Hey guys, this is what you need to think about. Those kinds of things are very powerful. Yeah, sure. really helpful. I, I tell you what, so you have, so let's call them the sprouts. So you have all <laughs> different sprouts. sprouts from all different walks of life <laughs> yeah. and all different businesses. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So well, in our, our little, we, we suggest, you know, two to 10 people. Okay. So you can just gotcha. be two people. Um, but as long as you both bring something to the table each time, something new, do a little research to help each other. For us, it's three of us. It's me, Dean and Steve. And we come together and then every week we try more and more actually to bring in a guest. So quite often the shows are four. Uh, so, but you know, once a month, it's just the three of us. And again, we go through that process every week and then we share, um, good information that we think um, will, will help each other's business. Because, we, you know, we see each other during during the week when we're off the air and we keep each other accountable. Believe me, we have plenty of conversations like, hey, you know, you said you'd be doing this for your company and you're not doing it. And <laughs> right. uh, it's good. good it's good to hear that sometimes when you make this big promise of what I'm going to do. And right. uh, you have a couple people in your ear saying, uh, uh, time's a ticking here, but. Yeah, yeah, Joe and I do that with each other. We get on, oh my we get God. on Skype and bitch each other out. <laughs> exactly. So did you get, yeah, did you you get to that? To. Yeah, did, weren't you supposed did to you do that? that? Or? Come on. But you know, yeah. a lot of create. I bet a lot of creativity comes out of those conversations too, and new ideas. Oh, yes. oh God, you don't even know. If, Some yeah. of the ideas the that we've come up with is, you know. The amount of ideas are just, you know, um, I don't think we can do all the different More things that we would time, like to yeah. do in a lifetime. It's like we got I a mean, notebook full of stuff, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we'll just sit and just talk and talk and just bang stuff back and forth um, and then have like, you know, three or four or five ideas just in one like two hour session. So, right. yeah, it's really helpful. I mean, when you bring in, um, you know, people from, you know, an eclectic um, bunch of sprouts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. well, what's nice about it is you get, you know, different viewpoints yes. of, you know, people are actually looking in on your business, looking in on you and they're able to say, you know, that doesn't look right. You know, you're not doing that right. Whereas, you know, you're internalized, you're, you're in there looking out and you're like, no, this feels good. This feels right. <laughs> right. You know, and, and you're wondering why you're failing, but all of everyone around you looking at you could be like, well, 
it's very apparent why you're failing. <laughs> exactly. You know? It's quite sure, obvious. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's quite obvious. <laughs> that's right. No, that's really great. Definitely everyone out there needs to go and check that check out. Check it out. Very, subscribe. Very cool. we, we, we do the, the video live on Mondays at noon, but we keep the YouTube video uh, open for at least a week and then we put it in archive. But the iTunes is always available. And again, articles every day. So. You know. Gotcha. And that's going to, that's a hangout. Is that right? Yeah. Every it's week? a Google is hangout, hangout? Mm-hmm. but Perfect. we, we, we post it live at green sprout forum. So you can just go to the front page and we'll have, we set it up like 15 minutes before. So when we go on, it goes live. So you don't have to find us in Google necessarily. You oh, can just nice. find us at the front page. Right. There you go. Right. All right, guys, let, let's go ahead and take a quick break and we will be right back after we hear from a couple of our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. From phones, tablets, laptops, and PCs, these days photographers use multiple internet-connected devices. Have you ever wished you could view your Lightroom images, folders, collections, and metadata from any of these devices? Now you can. Mosaic Storage Systems has created Mosaic View, an application that gives you access to your images without exporting or using a publishing service. Mosaic also offers Mosaic Archive, which directly integrates with Lightroom as a powerful cloud backup solution. Mosaic gives photographers access to all of their images from anywhere on virtually any device. Try Mosaic View today for free and access 2,000 of your most recent images. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Mosaic is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans. Go to mosaicarchive.com and use coupon code DPC at checkout. Mosaic. Lightroom. Anywhere. Any device. Secure. Backed up. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drives. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where ShootProof comes in. At ShootProof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. ShootProof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. ShootProof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through ShootProof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All ShootProof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try ShootProof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, ShootProof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. ShootProof. Upload, share, sell, print. All right, guys, we are back and we're going to talk a little bit about Twitter. I mean, I think it was last week. I think was the last time we talked about Twitter. We never talk about Twitter, right? (laughs) Yes. What's there to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, There's always something going on over there. So uh, this past week, Twitter was hacked yet again. Yes. Yes. And uh, this was this was a pretty big thing. um, But this was also one of the first times that Twitter has actually come out and have been very, you know, in the front with everybody saying, yeah, we got hacked. There was a big problem, but, you know, we caught it kind of in the middle of it. And right. here's a little bit about what happened. And here's some suggestions that ne- you guys need to take to, you know, protect yourself online, yeah. protect your security. So 
kind and of there the, wasn't too many people affected, right? Only a quarter of a million. Yep. Only a quarter yeah, of a million. Said. Quarter yeah. million, considering <laughs> yeah. you know the, the total number. It's not too yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. So they so said yeah, that if you uh, if you were one of the affected ones, that they would have sent out an email that you would have received asking you to change your password. So if you didn't get the email cha- telling you to change your password, you're probably okay. Yeah. You may want to go in and change your should. password anyway. Yeah, change it <laughs> yeah. anyway. Change, it, change anyway. it anyway. Yeah. And you right. should really do that every, you know, three, six months. Change your password. Make a make a little adjustment to it because you never know. Uh, and especially the good time to do that is when you start receiving a lot of those direct messages, you know, telling you that you th- yep. you're on this crazy video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. Have oh. you seen or this pic photo. of you? Yeah. Yeah. How, how, like, that's crazy. You know, so whenever you see a, you know, influx of those, it's a good time um, to, yeah. you know, a little spike. That means things are getting active again. You should probably change your password. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, and, and you know, what's kind of kind of crazy is, you know, they didn't just take like usernames or something, but they took like the usernames, the email addresses, the mm. the tokens from the sessions themselves, yeah. the encrypted, all the encrypted stuff. So not only do the encrypted passwords, but also the salt that goes along with it, which you use to, you know, um, hash against the, the encrypted password to get a good password. Um, so, I mean, they have salt, they have, they have the whole nine yards of all of these quarter of a million people. So it's, uh, I mean, that's, that's a pretty deep, you know, um, cut, I would oh, say. Yeah. I mean, these I'm, guys were good pros, that they, you I mean, know, they, def- they said they yeah. were not amateurs. These guys were definitely pros. They were very sophisticated on how they did it. Um, but you know, to with that, you know, in addition to changing your passwords, you definitely want to go into your settings there and revoke any OAuth apps that you really are not using. If, right. if you're not connected to something anymore, just revoke that access because that is a backdoor. They yeah. use yes. these, if, if a website gets hacked, they can use that token, that OAuth token to have access to your Twitter account. So good definitely point. revoke that point. if you're not using it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and you know, when you're in there and looking at all of these, you know, authorized apps that are, are, are using your, um, let's say your password, username and password to do whatever they're doing. Yep. You know, you might stumble across one that you don't even know you even authorized. That's right. That, you know, maybe, ran, you know, maybe you hit a button and it authorized it and you don't even know. So it's a good thing to do to go in there and see who, you know, what tokens you have in there and by who. Um, and anything that you don't know, get rid of it. Because chances yeah. are it's, you right. don't need it. You know, get rid of it. That's right. So, uh, yeah, yeah that is, that's huge. They also said in the blog post that, you know, they're echo- echoing the uh, the statement from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security right. by advising that all users go into their web browsers and disable Java. Um, Java, yeah. for the most part, is not needed for your daily web browsing. Um, it's only needed for select sites that you may visit. Java and JavaScript are two different things. JavaScript right. is widely used. Um, you can't really, you don't really want to disable that or you're going to lose a lot of functionality. Yeah. Java, though, is not necessary. So you can go into Safari, you can go into Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, you can go into all those things and just turn it off. Yeah, we, we'll put a link um, to um, a, a site or a page that will actually give you a yep. breakdown on how to turn how it to off do it. Yep. on all the three major browsers. So definitely go take a look at the show notes for that. Yeah, I think it's kind of, yeah, I, I mean, when they when Homeland Security gets involved, Twitter starts saying Java and to turn off mm-hmm. Java, but never actually pointing a finger. I mean, that uh, that's enough for kind me to read say, between okay, the lines there. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, right. Yeah. And then Oracle immediately flips out and like on the first there's you know the java you know update, update that comes yeah. out you know it kind of you know you read between the lines exactly i'm going to say yeah. obviously we're having a, a java exploit yep. yes. that was going on good so. point good point so with that let's roll into social media advertising so yeah. this is something that i know you're yes. very interested in with all the digital marketing that you do for mm-hmm. yourself as well as your clients Yep. Um, the same with me. I mean, I, I do a lot of uh, consultation with my clients as far as digital marketing goes um, and social media. I mean, social media advertising. I mean, that is um, something that is really needs to be looked at. You know, we yeah. a lot of us use social media for the free aspect of it. You know, the free promotion that we get through Twitter, the free promotion we get through our Facebook fan page. But sometimes you just do need 
to do advertising, to reach yeah, like those we were targeted saying, audiences. Exactly what we were saying earlier, you know, as photographers, we're doing less photography these days yeah. and we're yeah. doing more social media. We're doing more promotion. We're doing more sales, um, everything besides photography, yeah. you know, more editing. Uh, we're probably doing 10 percent, 15 percent of photography and all the rest of everything else that's more business and social media oriented just to get the business well, through the door. In right? some ways, photographers have more time because, you know, all the production that was involved i mean we have more post-production i think now but yeah, I think. with the the pre-production that was involved something that would take all day now takes two hours with digital yeah. because we know we have the shot and the, the stuff we can do in post-production and so mm -hmm. we have more time but we also spent you know I think in the past, when we didn't have this social media, we just sat and pout and wondered why we didn't have more jobs. At least we have something to do and can feel a little more proactive That's during right. those down times. That's right. So, so what have you uh, been testing? What have you been playing with um, for your clients? And what type of results have you seen that, sure. that we might be able to you know, parlay into the photography area? Well, the one thing that I have um, felt I've gotten the most bang for my buck have been promoted Facebook posts mm -hmm. and updates. By far nice. the best investment for my money. When it comes back to more likes, more um, more actual comments and engagement and, and, and all right. that, yeah. uh, that, that's a bonus. But not only that, they convert. And that's yeah, the bottom nice. line. You want yes. people to convert. And and so I, and convert means for those who are unsure, means the, the visitor is doing what you want them to do. And right. that may be fill out a form. That may be download something. That may be purchasing something. And I have found that, you know, I, my focus was conversions. And, and I did a test and conversions were great, but then I realized I got all these side benefits. Again, the likes, the comments, the shares, sure. all above and beyond. So, wow, it was like the complete, you know, triple crown kind of package. It was working great. Right. Um, and I've tried others, you know, like the Twitter advertising and the, the conversions, the, the engagement wasn't even close. Wasn't really? even close. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I was halfway through it and I just wanted to stop. Like I'm wasting, if I go all through the whole project, cause I, I use the exact same type of ads. I use the exact same sales funnel, everything. So I could compare one to one. And yeah. by far, uh, those promoted posts did a much better job. Um, some things that I, there's some areas like promoting your entire Facebook page. Um, there's a, that's been released recently. So you can get more likes. You can, I just don't see the value as much. I mean, I yeah. just don't like paint. You, you, you can get some more likes, and I've seen some results from some of my friends that have been a little bit better than what I was receiving. But ultimately, I could get just as many likes in, through a promoted through, post. Through other so, means, yeah, sure, yeah, right. Yeah, right. so I think that one right there is the best one. Twitter, you know, again, if you're doing a full, complete package, Twitter's fine, and, but again, just don't expect the same results. The main sure. thing, no matter what you do, just like when you're using Google AdWords, you need to have a well-defined funnel. What is yes. the path from the point in which they see your ad all the way through to conversion? And what is that funnel? And how are you keeping track of all the points within that funnel? That same rule applies to social media advertising. Sure. Sure. Right. Yeah, that's we, right. I mean, it's it's more than just getting them to your fan page for a like or what have you. You do right. need them to convert somehow, like you yep. said, whether that's signing up for um, an email list or I mean, maybe your conversion is just simply interaction on Facebook. Now, right. you know, the Facebook engine out there, they have been tweaking their algorithms ongoing, the same as right. Google does with the search. social graph, yep. Yeah, social and, graph. right. You know, now you've got affinity, you've got edge rank, you've got all these things that come into play as to how frequent your status updates for your page will be seen in your, in your connections right. news feeds. Right. And they say on average, I mean, it's like what, 12% or something like that, 12% of your followers will actually see your That's post. about right. Yeah, 12, yeah, 12 to 20. I, I, yep. I'll get the 25, but that's about right. Mm -hmm. But now you do promoted posts and yes, you're paying. And, and there was, I know when this first came out, there were a lot of people that were up in arms about it. Why do I have to now pay for my, for my fans to see you my don't. posts when they were getting them for free? And, and that's right. You don't have to, but no. 
they need Facebook. I understand what they're doing. I mean, they needed to tweak their algorithms because there's just so much noise out there that they want to show what is most relevant to that user at yep. the top of their newsfeed. And if your Facebook page right. is not relevant to them, they're not going to show your posts as frequently. And that's right. they can't where, afford, you know, they can't afford it turning into a, absolutely. They can't afford it turning into a MySpace, you know, right. and then everyone yeah. kind of just right. like migrates off uh, from it. Right. You know, I wanted a quick question. I know we've both, you know, for the show, as well as you did for current photographer, I've done for, mm -hmm. um, for my business, uh, Facebook, which worked out really good. Um, have you done anything with Google Plus um, uh, besides the regular the Google uh, AdWords or what what else what else have you done besides Facebook? I know Facebook is the main one, right? There, as as far other? as advertising, no. I mean, as far as using them, yes. I mean, the communities is actually a really good place right now. I mean, if you don't have a community right now, if you have a good idea for a community, you can really gather a nice engaged um, audience. So it's it's a good place to go. Uh, but as far as the um, overall, uh, in terms of advertising specifically, no, not not in the Google Plus area. But it's a good idea to have that a page for your company mm -hmm. through uh, Google Plus. I, I highly recommend that. Uh, but you know, uh, going quickly, going back to the Facebook uh, point though, it's it, just for comparison. Um, I one of the one of the uh, pages that I used on average for the test. Uh, for, for one of those tests was about had average maybe 200 views. 200 people each time you post on that page would get 200 views. When I did the promoted post, I got over 10,000. Wow. And, nice. Yeah. And, wow. and other ones that's haven't huge. been as that big. Maybe I would get 5,000. But still, that's huge. So for 10, 15 yeah. bucks, you can get a, a huge number people to see it and I, I think it's extremely valuable in that way um and as long as they convert it's yeah, definitely yeah worth and it. they convert so that's that's yep. the main issue you can have i mean it's engaged and you can tell how do you know are the, if it's a good audience well you look at your google analytics you look at the time time on site you look at the bounce rate and you see how many pages the they went through and so and, and look at the funnel you know where do they go so that's very helpful and you can for example um a lot of times people get all this traffic and they're going crazy. I can't believe I got all this traffic from stumble upon. Well, right. you know, you look at the analytics, you see, you know, yeah, it's a big spike, but they were there for two seconds and 96% of them bounce back to where they came from. So yeah, it was, is, is, is useless, useless yeah, traffic. Useless, yeah. This has been good traffic. And even with Twitter, it's not quite as engaged. It's probably about half of what I get in terms of Facebook, in terms of the advertising uh, visitors, in terms of engagement. Right. So you get you get fewer visitors and you get half the engagement. So, you know, one thing that we've done that has actually worked quite well is just the sharing of images on Facebook. Sure. Not that's, necessarily. That's I mean, you know, from a photographer standpoint, sure, you have photos that you may have created, but I'm talking about just Photoshop images that you create with type on them, with a call to action on them. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. These, these types of images really do well. They get a lot of views, they get shares, they get likes because there's a message behind it. It's not just right. a pretty image where, oh, wow, I'll click, I like that, you know, and, and that's great. And you will get some of those, but the... If you create a graphic, if you create an image that has that call to action, that has more of an interactive feel to it, um, that can make a huge difference. Infographics can be great. Absolutely, uh, infographics. You know, and if you're if you don't if you're not very good at creating infographics, you can go to a site called Easily, and that will. Um, and I can send you the link for your show notes if you wish. Yeah, please. Um, it, sure. I, I've Absolutely. made a few from that, and it's worked out very well. And especially in the early days of Green Sprout Forum, we we threw a few out there, and we really got some nice traffic from that. People do like infographics. Absolutely, and, they do. And in posts, blog posts. I mean, this is one of the things we're doing early with all this as we're kicking things off. We want more traffic, and we want good traffic. Yep. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, those lists they work. Photos, obviously, you said work really well. Infographics work really well. So 
yeah, you know, continue to do what works. We always think, oh, I don't want to do another list. It's just so overused. <laughs> well, it's overused because we keep clicking on it. And so right. if we keep cl- clicking on it, then we might as well keep using it. And I think it's basically yep. comes down to this. You know, if you see three things, you know, related to something you like, you know, okay, I don't have to spend much time. I'll get some good information. If you're looking for something a little deeper and you see something, a hundred things, you know, related to your topic, you'll dig in deeper. So yes. you know what you're getting. And I think that's why people like those numbers numbers uh, in those lists. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, great stuff as always, Raj. It's fantastic. Absolutely. We're so glad that you uh, were able to take some time and spend with us. Oh, thanks for having me. I always enjoy visiting you guys. Uh, oh, well, great. so what is it? One, I think we came up, what is it? 182? Yes. Yes. Around there? 182. yes. So Episode that, 182. Six that's right. Yes. <laughs> that will be, six years that'll be titled. <laughs> yeah. That'll be, we'll title it the geriatric show. And, <laughs> that's um, right. Yeah. We'll, right. we'll, we'll still be here. I think just <laughs> plugging along. Right. That's right. That's so right. Rosh, where can everyone find you? Where should we send them? The easiest place is over at roshsillers.com. And that's my blog and podcast, and you can branch out from there to find me. Twitter's also another good place, at Rosh Sillers. Excellent. Nice. All right, Excellent. Joe, I think that's it. It is time we are out of here. So if uh, our listeners want to find more about you, where's the best to reach you? They can find me on Twitter also. That's at Joseph Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Excellent. And you can find me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Kern. All right, guys, you can get all of these great show notes from this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash 91. And don't forget, if you enjoy this show, please give us a five star review in iTunes. You can simply go over to digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash iTunes. Keep your questions and comments coming and we'll talk to you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.